most Roblox developers are stuck in 2012. So back in 2012, most games were very blocky, right? Stud laden games filled the front page of Roblox. Things were simpler. I started on Roblox in 2015. And at that time, they were partly stud games and they were partly games that were taking on a newer style. But in 2012, there was no such thing as DevX. DevX is how you turn Robux into real life currency. It's how you turn Robux into USD. And on October 1st, 2013, the entire game of Roblox development changed forever because that was the day that Roblox released DevX. And games on Roblox went from pieces of art, right, to monetizable products in a marketplace of other products overnight. Now, games were not just art pieces. They were also products. They were also things that could make real money for their creators. The issue is most devs were still thinking only like artists, only focused on passion. And passion is great. But the issue is we're now in 2025. DevX has existed for nearly 12 years now. Roblox development is not just a hobby. It is not just a form of art. It is a business. And that is a statement that angers a lot of devs. The problem is devs do not want to see this as a business. Even successful developers, those you see on the top of the front page, devs who make some of the top UGC items on the catalog. They are still thinking of this only like an art. And when devs are still thinking like it's 2012, they halt their potential. There are a lot of parallels between Roblox game development and business. There were a lot of concepts in business that I saw that I thought, wow, if Roblox developers knew these, they would level up massively. For example, a lot of devs would go from just being solo developers who make a project and get a thousand players on it and keep working on it by themselves or with a small group of people to owning studios and leading developer teams. And what I see in this space is a lot of people who hate the pursuit of money. They are passion first developers, but at a certain point we have to grow up and staying only in the realm of passion and just following your heart and making whatever you feel like prevents you from building a business. What I've found out over the years is that developers need to make a long-term career strategy. Strategy is what developers are missing. They're missing a plan, a plan to take them from where they're at now, a new developer who barely knows how to script a kill brick, to a developer with a thousand CCU and millions of Robux earned, right? How do they make this jump? We've recently had somebody make this jump in our community and make a very successful game after watching my videos and put into practice everything I'm saying, but that's only because he thought from strategy first. See, the new wave of Roblox developers will be strategy first. This is what these hobbyists don't want to accept. Strategy first Roblox developers, because they're thinking ahead, they are thinking about the best moves they can make on the chessboard to put them in the best position to win. And that involves making money. And you make money not just so you can live a lavish lifestyle or buy a bunch of stuff. No, you earn money so you can build leverage. Leverage is a key business concept. It's basically the multiplier on your efforts and investments. Money, capital, is leverage because I'm able to use that to pay developer teams. I'm able to pay scripters, builders, modelers, UI designers, graphic designers to make games for me. And me as a project manager and game designer, I'm able to own and manage these projects without putting all of my time and effort into developing them in studio. Now I'm able to release more games and better games because I have the help of a developer team. Now the problem is most devs don't have the resources yet to do this. They don't have money. For somebody like Hazem, hiring developers is a natural next step. He made Please Donate by himself at first, but then when he made billions of Robux, which is hundreds of millions of US dollars at this point, it was obvious for him that he would need to hire a team. In order to maintain Please Donate and update it, he went, hey, I have this massive game, I have a ton of money, and I need to update this game and maintain it for my player base, 
So I'm gonna hire a developer team. And that's what he did. Now he pays people to help him make updates and grow his studio. Hazem has leverage, and this was natural for him. But most developers are not Hazem. They're starting with very little funds. They're starting with no audience. And unlike Hazem, they need to think very hard about Roblox development career strategy in order to have a chance to succeed. Because most devs operating passion first fail. Back in 2017, I started a group called Volt Gaming Studios. When I was 11 years old, I made my first Roblox group. And OGs like me will remember this. There was a game called the Group Recruiting Plaza. And in this game, you would make a booth. You would sit there all day and you would wait for people to come up and apply to enter your group. So we would sit there all day trying to find developers to work with us. And over time, we built a team of like 10 people and we made these games. We made Camping Simulator. We made Spark Mini Games. We made The Hinge. We made all kinds of other projects fueled by passion. But now most of these games are capped at 100 to a few thousand visits at max. And the only people who enjoyed them were the small group of people who happen to be members of the group. Most devs out there are 13, 14, 15 year olds loading up studio, trying to make games that they love, trying to make projects that they enjoy making and hoping they get players on them magically. But they usually fail because they're passion first. They don't have a strategy to take them from noob to pro. They don't have a strategy to take them from where they're at now, somebody who barely knows how to write one line of code, to somebody who's mastered skills like scripting, project management, and game design, and use them following a strategy first mindset to make games with millions of visits and earn them millions of Robux. We made Jimmy games, and we made games based on memes. We base games on what was popular, and we aim to make money from those projects by putting game passes into them. We had a successful game that got hundreds of players at a time, and even landed on Featured once. We were successful. We made it. But it wasn't in the way that I was taught and trained to think I would make it. Because most developers are thinking like hobbyists. They think, if I just follow my passion, it will all magically work out in the end. You make something and there's just a shot that it blows up. It, it's a lottery ticket, man. But I'm saying you actually can have control over outcomes. You can have a strategy that increases your odds of success. That's the point of what I'm saying. Not only did I make passion projects in Volt Gaming Studios before I was skilled enough to complete them and get them out there, I also made a massive game starting in 2021 before I was ready. I made my dream game. And my dad and I worked on this game for two or three years, but I just wasn't ready to complete it at my current skill level. I would have been better off focusing more on strategy first Roblox game development, making simple games, learning from that, improving my scripting skills, rather than focusing so hard on making my dream roleplay game, basically the next Brookhaven, but with a very unique idea before I was ready. Make simple games first, dream games later. This is what I learned through brutal experience and ruthlessly objective observation of what succeeds on this platform. Hazem is not your average developer. He is an outlier. Your average dev is Timmy. He's young, he's unskilled, and he's only driven by passion. These devs fail because they lack strategy. My channel exists to teach Timmy's how to become serious developers. Not so they abandon their passion, but so they guide it in a direction that enables them to have the highest chance to make it on this platform. The Smarty RBX channel exists not to build careers for developers, but to give them the tools to build a career on this platform themselves. So back to Volt Gaming Studios. During my time as the lead developer in that group, I met a lot of devs. We built an entire team of people that we found on Roblox to collaborate with. And these were some of the guys I found. Very passionate developers who made dozens of games. I'm talking dozens. But I remember these guys were making dream game after dream game after dream game. One day, I went from just talking to them on Discord to getting in a Discord call with these guys and discussing the project they were working on. I got in studio and I helped them out. I was a builder at the time, so I was working on their terrain. And this game 
was so massive. And I didn't know it at the time, but right there was an example of trying to make your dream game too soon. It looks like these guys burnt out and quit. Things just didn't work. They didn't have the resources to pay other developers to help them. I'm not sure if these guys are going to come back to Roblox, but I would like to see them return with a strategy first approach. These guys were trying to make an open world hunting game, but this was a very complex project that they just weren't ready to make. Now, this is the effect of developers just following their passion. Most devs are not the devs behind Deepwoken, who followed their passion, who people like to say, oh, they followed their passion and they succeeded. Those devs are exceptionally skilled and they have an entire team behind what they do. This is the harsh truth that people don't want to accept. Jack and Colby are better examples of your average Roblox developer, but they were doing the same thing that Volt Gaming Studios did. And there are countless other developers and groups out there who are doing this as well. And we would see a lot more successful developers on Roblox if more people took on an accurate mindset of how development works and took this field seriously. Rather than staying stuck in 2012 in their thinking, transitioning to a mindset that is adapted to the 2025 economy of Roblox and the state of the platform right now rather than how it used to be. We can never go back. We can only move forward. So it's better, rather than reminiscing about the past and wishing that things would be how they were back when games only capped out at a few thousand players, it's better that we move forward today because Roblox is now bigger than it's ever been. Roblox has millions of users online at any given time on the number one game on Roblox. Roblox development is a business now. Roblox developers need to take on a strategy to succeed in that business. That doesn't mean all you're after is money, but that you have to recognize the value and the need for money in your journey and the pursuit of your goals as a developer. And to not shame developers or feel shame for aiming to make money because you know the purpose behind it. It's to build leverage and adapt to a platform that is becoming increasingly competitive and has rapidly rising standards for what players expect from games. I remember when I first started playing Roblox, there were a lot of games that were popular where all you would do was go down a long slide made of parts. You'd fly down miles and miles and miles on this little cart-like thing. Sometimes you'd hit the side wall and you'd just get thrown straight off the side of the map into the void of the skybox. These games were imperfect. These games were extremely simple. And games like this were all over the front page of Roblox. Now, even the simplest games that I see, the games people call cash grab slop, are more complex than most of the games that existed in early Roblox. Games now that people call low quality are higher quality than the simple games they reminisce about in the olden days of Roblox. It takes more scripting skill, more modeling skill, more UI design skill to make a simple simulator now than it ever took to make a simple obby or a simple slide game that succeeded around 2015. But this means that developers need high amounts of skill themselves or they need resources in order to make these games. Devs need leverage. They need to hire teams. And the way they do this is by being strategy first, by thinking ahead and thinking, okay, if I'm going to optimize my position, I am going to take commissions. I'm going to earn 500,000 Robux. And that money will be the leverage that allows me to hire a scripter and a modeler and a UI designer to make games on Roblox to make simple games or more complex games. And you could hire devs to do everything, or you could focus on just doing the skill that you're good at. Like say that you're a scripter. You do all the scripting on the game and then you hire out everything else. That's a higher leverage way to make games than doing it all on your own, but you're still leveraging your strong suit and you're still working within studio. But most devs, like all the devs I was meeting in my early days on Roblox, need a strategy to get to that point. I don't think Jack and Colby took commissions, or if they did, they didn't charge high enough to earn the funds that would allow them to advertise their games and get success, or pay devs that could help them to make better games that would actually make it in the market. 
right? If Jack and Colby had followed development career strategy, if they had my videos I'm making now back then, and they actually put it into practice properly, they would have had a much higher chance to be successful. And they may have had a game with hundreds to thousands of players as we speak, if they did. And if they come back, or many of these other developers I used to know come back and they become strategy first Roblox developers, they will start planning ahead. They will think, okay, I'm gonna take commissions or I'm gonna make dev assets or I'm gonna make dev content or I'm gonna make simple games because I have experience. I'm gonna do something to earn money so that I have the leverage to pay teams to make better games and start to build a studio on Roblox that has a team of developers who are actually skilled and that actually ships projects that the market wants to make games that are products. Everything that we teach on this channel is what devs are missing. And the more devs who watch this channel and the more devs who learn about strategy first Roblox game development and put it into practice, the more people you're gonna see coming out of this community, winning and making successful games. You will see developers coming out of this community doing Roblox development as their full-time job. And you will see devs coming out of this community who own studios on Roblox, who make businesses, who reach the front page. And the reason why is because on this channel, I tell the truth about how development works. I don't tell you comforting lies like, just follow your passion and it will all magically work out. People don't wanna accept the truth because confronting the truth exposes the lies they've believed in this entire time. The lie that passion is above everything. The lie that Roblox development is not a business. The lie that strategy is evil. All come crumbling down when you come in with a strategy first mindset and say, hey, look, I wanna make money. I feel zero shame about that. I wanna make simple games. I'm not gonna to cater to your dream game syndrome and say, hey, oh, I'm gonna make the perfect game ever on day one. When you come out here and you aren't looking to be accepted, you're looking to get results, that is polarizing. The group think of the Roblox developer community makes it so that people act like hobbyists so they can be accepted by the herd. Rather than being strategy first, rather than saying and owning the fact that you wanna make money and that you wanna build a business and that you wanna think long-term and have a strategy and also treat Roblox games like products as well as art, they'll get a lot of shade thrown at them if they say this. And most people are too afraid of that shade. They're too afraid of being called a cash grabber. They're too scared of leaving the passion first mindset because they're afraid of the consequences. I am not, I don't care. Thinking as a serious developer benefits you. It also benefits the platform because when devs earn money and build leverage and build businesses, they have the resources and the capital and the team in order to make better games. What benefits you will actually end up benefiting everybody else as well. I am building a movement of developers who think correctly and aren't afraid to approach this like a business. The game has changed and therefore your mental software has to change as well. And most devs are stuck in 2012 mental software in a 2025 reality. Most Roblox players are young, they want simple games, and the second you stop attacking it and stop calling it cash grab slop is the second you learn from it and start to improve your own strategy and approach to Roblox game development based on that information, based on core loops that work, based on making games that have a small project scope that can actually be shipped rather than sit in development for years and probably never release, like Jack and Colby's hunting game. So by me making these videos, I'm not claiming to be the perfect developer. What I am is somebody who sees reality clearly and can describe it better than everyone else. And more people, like the guy I talked about earlier, will find this channel and they will lead careers based on truth, not on hopeful idealism that holds them back. We are focused on reality, results. We're focused on what is successful in the market. We're focused on facts rather than feelings. Click this video here to learn more about strategy first Roblox game development, and I will see you next video.